Crafting with the Crazy Hair Kids. Hi, I'm Kevin. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm Kamari. I'm Kelly. Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm Kiara. We're the Crazy Hair Kids. We're Khalil and Keisha. We're the parents. We may pop in from time to time if you need a little help. We love music, and we love making our own musical instruments. We hope you'll love making musical instruments, too. Let's get started! Hi, it's Miss Frida. Welcome back. I'm glad you're able to join us today. I'm here thanks to my friends, the Crazy Hair Kids, who have asked me to show you how to make a stringed instrument called a lyre. It's spelled L-Y-R-E. It's like a harp. In the Bible, David was a shepherd boy, and as he sat out watching his flocks at night, he liked to sing, and they tell us in the Bible he would play his lyre or his harp. And even when he got older, when he worked with King Saul and was his assistant, he would, they say in the Bible that King Saul would get awful headaches or he'd get very upset. And David would calm him by stringing his, strumming his lyre, kind of like he would a guitar, and singing to him. And even as a king, he still liked to write poetry, write songs, and still play his musical instrument. So what we're going to do is make something similar today. What you're going to need is an empty box or shoe box. Today I brought along, this used to be pasta and this had dry milk powders, but I also have a shoe box, but I'm going to show you how to use these. You want to cut a hole in the middle. Let me show you one that I've already finished. See how you cut a hole in the middle like a guitar. What this does is allow the sound inside to echo, kind of if you're standing on a mountaintop near a canyon and you yell, hello, 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 it echoes back. It reverberates and that's what causes a better sound. So we're going to work toward making that. Now I've started today with this wonderful little box that had pasta in it. This is easy because it already has an opening. Now make sure I open that just a little bit more and it's not enough to help. So I'm going to use my scissors and cut the hole larger. It doesn't have to be oval, it doesn't have to be square, it's whatever size you like. If you have difficulty cutting, if your box is a little bit stronger than this one or it's harder to cut, that's where you might ask, ta-da, mom and dad to come help you just a little bit or your grandmom or an older brother or sister. So I'm going to cut this around to make the opening. And as is, if I just left it like this, that would be fine. It wouldn't make some really cool noise. But suppose I really want it to look a little bit better. I'm going to now, thanks mom, thanks dad for coming to help, so they're going to wait in case I need them later. I'm going to move aside some of my utensils, and in fact, since I use this just as a demonstration to show you different boxes you can use, I'm going to put that aside, and I'm going to use just this one box. I've decided I'd like to cover this box so it doesn't quite just look like this. I want it to look better. I have construction paper, or you can use gift wrapping paper if you've got something really cool around the house. This is what I had. That would look really good. But I think I'm going to start today with just using construction paper. To do this, I'm going to lay my box down against the paper, see? And I'm going to fold the paper to see how much I can cover. And once I've got it like this, I'm going to try to get it to stick by doing this. If you've got your glue sticks, get those out now. We're going to get the glue sticks. There we go. And get your glue to the end. This one I may need a second because this one's not very full. And I'm going to put glue on my construction paper. Kind of all around. It doesn't have to be every inch. You just want it to make sure it's covering mostly the edges. 
so I can make my box. I want this to fit on my box. So let's see how we're doing. Once I get the glue on there, I'll press it onto my box. It helps sometimes if you just kind of let it rest for a little bit for the glue to stick. And since this didn't cover my entire box, I'm going to need another piece of construction paper. So I'll start there and put a fold in it. This is covering the top. Notice I'm covering the part that I've already cut the hole out. And there's a reason for that. Because I want to decorate it and it's easier to cut it and then start over. So I'm going to fit this to my box a little bit. Back to my glue stick. And again, I'm going to put my glue, rub my glue stick all over this construction paper so that it'll stick better. Again, you don't have to hit every single part, just primarily the edges. There we go. Then I'm going to overlap like this. But you know, while it looks good this way, look at those crazy ends. Mm, very funny. I'm going to trim my ends a little bit. And that'll take a little bit of work. Or you can just cut the corners on all four corners. See, yeah, whoops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to knock you over. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut all four corners. See how I'm doing this? And once I cut all four corners, I'm going to fold this in. Just so I first I'm folding it in to make sure I've got everything covered. Whoopsie, there's my second piece. And I can do one of two things. I can either cut more construction paper to fit there, or where did I put my tape? Voila! Tape. I'm going to go ahead, in this case, and tape all of the edges closed. There's a reason why I'm going to do this, but still leave part of the box. See, you still see part of the box? I can hear that bird likes to sing while I'm doing this too. You probably heard a bird. By the way, this is a good time to remind you, if you're crafting outside, make sure you keep a nice cold drink like a glass of water. Mm or something so you can stay hydrated, especially when it's really warm in the summertime like it has been the past few days. So I'm going to fold over all my edges and I can use a glue stick or I can use tape. I'm just using tape here, but when you make it at home, you can use whichever works best. You can ask someone to help you cut more construction paper, which I could do to fit these ends and then glue that over top. Or as I'm doing today, I am just going to tape these over. Once I get everything taped down, then, and I just need one more piece of tape. I've used a lot on this. It's okay if you use a lot to get yours to stick to. I can feel which end has the opening, the hole in it, and I am going to, I hope I can tell which end has the hole in it, yes I can. Then I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to press in the middle. So when I press in the middle where the hole was, see that's going to tear an opening, that's what I want to do. So then you can use your scissors to cut around to find approximately where the previous hole was, the one that you already cut out, it's so much easier to already have cut the hole and then decorate it if you're going to do this than it is to decorate it first and then try to cut a hole through it because it just seems to be that much harder. And not that we want to take the easy way out, but we're going to make sure we make this something that's not too difficult. So see, now I have my box like this. We're almost done. But you know, that's still awfully pretty because it's purple. Purple is one of my favorite colors. But I may want to decorate this some more. So this is where 
if you have stickers, and I have dots that I happen to find in an office at home, I'm going to put a few of these dots on. So see how if I put a few dots on here, it just makes it just kind of look pretty. It doesn't matter exactly where you put them. Or if you have other types of stickers somewhere, you can put stickers. It doesn't have to be anything like how I've made mine. Make it the way you like yours. Oh my goodness, look at this. I've got some goofy stickers that say, grr, feed me. Oh my gracious. I think I'm going to use some of these stickers. In fact, I think I like this monster sticker. You know how I left that end open? I'm going to put him right over that end. He's a little big, but it's okay if he wraps around just a little. And see how he covered that end really, really well? Now I've got another end. wonder if I have another one. Oh, gracious, I see a few. Hmm, I like this guy, the guy with all the eyes. I think that's kind of cute. So I'm going to peel this sticker off. Whoa, and I know he's big for this end. I'm just going to put him right over top, and even though his arms and his eyes and his legs and his ears, I think those are ears, go over the edge, that's okay. I'm going to do that as well. Okay, I'm going to put a few other little stickers on the side. Oh look, he's got an extra eyeball. I think that's a good spot for an eyeball, don't you? Oh, and here's the one that says, feed me. I'll put feed me right there because he seems that he's always hungry. Oh my goodness. One of my little friends decided that it's breezy out here and he was going to run off. But nope, we're going to come back and watch the rest of our lessons. So we're going to put a few stickers on this side. Whoops, dropped my stickers. Here's one that just says grrr. Her is a good one to put on this side. You can color yours. You can tape all kinds of crazy stickers. You can do all kinds of different things to make it your own. So now we get to the fun part. Rubber bands. I have all kinds of rubber bands here. I need one that fits. Ah, oh, that one fits. So let's see if, oh, I've got, ooh, nope, too small. Can't use that one. Look, a purple one. That goes really well with my purple color. You can put, I would say, five or six different rubber bands. If you can find ones that you like in colors, that's great. Otherwise, just the solid color rubber bands are fine. Make sure, see mine are overlapping. You don't want them to overlap. Move them apart just a little bit. You don't want them to run into each other. They each need their own space. Oops. Here I found a pretty pink one. I'm going to put a pink one on here. And just because I have different colors, that green one looks nice too. I'm putting five on mine. Maybe I'll put six. I like six. Six is a good number. Ooh, because I found a blue one. I think I'll put a blue one on here. Okay, so my musical stringed instrument now has six different rubber bands. Let's see how they sound if I were to play these one at a time. Hmm, not bad. They all have a different tone. Here's something I discovered. Listen to this blue one. If I pull it really tight, it changes the sound. Wow! So when you put your rubber bands on here, you can move them around a little and see how, much, how tight or how loose. Hmm. And if you don't like the sound of one, if it's too deep, tighten it. If it's too high, then loosen it some in the front. Well, those sound pretty good, but here's another secret that makes it sound even better. 
you need two pencils. I have crazy colored pencils. I guess because I got them from the crazy hair kids and they have different colored pencils. You want to slip your pencil underneath your rubber bands. That raises them up a little. Do it on each end. See, I'm doing this underneath and then I'm rolling it down to this end. And then that keeps these a little higher. And let's listen. That changes the sound even more. And because they have the open box in behind, the open box is going to sound more like an echo and make it louder. So just as King David would sit and play his lyre so that he could calm the sheep and come up with songs and poems, you can do the same thing with yours. Now remember, David was first a shepherd boy. He then defeated Goliath, as you learned in your lesson, and later he became a great king. And all through that, he continued to love and play music. So, thank you for joining us today, and I hope you'll greet us again in the future and join with us to make our next craft. Bye-bye.